Hello, this is Professor Nesheba, and I wanted to do a little follow-up video on um, examining the transition metal cation complexes. So um, here's the handout uh, that we were looking at, and uh, the idea here is here's some bare d orbitals, and they have uh, these these shapes. And um, when uh, when it gets put into a complex, then you can still recognize those those shapes. So for example, I have here the chromium carbon monoxide complex, and you can you can kind of see that same uh, d orbital in there. But now it's uh, surrounded by um, these ligands. And uh, the next thing I just uh, want to point out here is that there's a couple of these um, over here. I'm I'm, I'm looking at there's a pair, so uh, these must be the EG um, antibonding orbitals, and uh, we'd like to see whether these uh, interactions here are sigma star or pi star, and I kind of think that in going from the uh, metal, which is here, to the ligand, it looks like it has symmetry about the internuclear axis, and it obviously has a, a color change, phase change, and so... Um, this is a, a sigma star kind of interaction here. So we would say these EG guys here are sigma star, both of them. How about uh, down here on the, uh, the, the, the set of three, the T2Gs? Well, um, this one, uh, it kind of looks like, well, there's obviously the D orbital of the, of the metal. And uh, there's just not very much interaction going on with respect to that ligand there. So we would call that one an N. Um, for a non-bonding interaction. Uh, I'm just pointing that out uh, because uh, here if we go to the chromium water complex and I'll do the same thing here you can you can kind of see so I'm now uh, once again at the EG orbitals I can see a kind of a D orbital there uh, in the uh, around the, the, the metal there's once again a Sigma star going on with respect to the ligands and uh, on both of them and uh, as you can see, but now if I drop down to the uh, these these T2G guys there, now it's I can see there's really significant antibonding interaction going on between that um, uh, metal center D orbital and, uh, for example, that that ligand right there. And since the there's a color change, but it doesn't have symmetry about the internuclear axis, that must be a pi star. And uh, if you look at all three of these guys, you'll see that there's you can identify pi star interactions uh, all across the board. Okay, and now if we go over to the ammonia complex and uh, and think about the same uh, sort of um, thing there. Well, once again, I'm I'm here at the EG pair of, of uh, orbitals, and um, that looks like a d orbital right there in the middle, and uh, I've got something something that looks like a sigma star uh, interacting with the ligands. If I drop down now to the the uh, the T two Gs, well, this is a pretty extreme example, uh, right? Uh, I see uh, definitely a, a d orbital there, and hardly anything going on uh, with the ligands. So this is definitely a case of a of a non bonding um, uh, interaction of the the D's with the uh, with the ligands. Oh, and uh, there's one more point about this. Uh, if I'm interested in the energy gap between uh, the the T2Gs and the EGs, um, what you do is you click on the higher one there, and you can see down here that energy is minus 14.9. And uh, if I go down, uh, that's the crystal field splitting right there and uh, so I go down to there and now I see that the new energy is minus 21.4 so it's the difference between uh, those two numbers the, uh, that give you the crystal field splitting delta delta naught.